Shiny Pokemon are the pinnacle of any Pokemon game. Whoa, what on earth just shined? At least they were until Pokemon Legends Arceus released. With insane shiny odds and shiny Pokemon appearing in the overworld, it seems like you can't go five minutes without finding one of the little buggers. Despite this, however, there is one kind of shiny in these games that are regarded above the rest. Shiny Alpha Pokemon Pole. What? So, with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet just around the corner, I wanted to give this game one last send off by trying to find a shiny alpha Pokemon using every method in the game in just 24 hours. Will I be able to pull it off? Or will my final challenge in Pokemon Legends Arceus be a failure? It's time to find out. But wait, if you go on to enjoy today's video, consider checking out my Twitch, where I complete all these challenges live with you guys. I'm likely completing my first Scarlet and Violet challenge right now. And make sure to do all the other stuff too. Now, let's get into the challenge. This whole video idea was actually sparked by one single target. But first, some context. Big surprise to no one, I'm a big fan of the Piplup family. So, when I found out there was a forced alpha Empoleon spawn in the Cobalt Coastlands, I made it my sole mission to find a shiny one. And I did. And then I found another. And then I found an accidental shiny alpha Infernape. So, it only naturally made sense to also hunt down the shiny alpha Totara to complete my shiny Sinnoh family. I started this in March. It's now November. And not only have I not found my moldy turtle, but I have I haven't found a single shiny alpha form from this entire dedicated route reset. So that's where this challenge comes in. I gave myself 24 hours to at least find one of these shiny alpha forms, and if I got lucky, I might even get my turtle. Plus, I wanted a good excuse to also use the other shiny alpha hunting methods, that being massive mass outbreaks, as well as the soft reset method. So I put up stream, I waste no time in declaring my intentions. Today's the day! I'm declaring it, boys. I'm declaring war on alpha and bull, or alpha, alpha Totara. That's right, only two minutes in the stream. And I'd already declared war on the turtle. Yeah, this stream was a wild one. But regardless, we hop right into hunting. And with only 24 hours on the clock, I wanted to ensure I was completing this challenge as quickly and efficiently as possible. So every time I loaded up the map, I ensured I always went into the Crimson Mirelands. That way I could both carry out the right reset for Torterra, as well as check any possible massive mass outbreaks that would spawn. Speaking of that right reset, this was the route I was running. While loading into the Mirelands, I would instantly hop on Braviary, turn to the left, and fly straight. It doesn't take long before reaching the Alpha Ursa ring. Next up is Pachirisu, which can be a really easy one to miss if you're not paying attention. Then we fly directly across the bog, and quickly encounter Toxic Rook. Nope. I think there's also an Alpha Carnivine that spawns here too, but if I find this, I would be incredibly disappointed. Up next then is the big boy himself. Totara, before then sharply arriving at the final alpha check, being Alpha Slegu. All of these are insanely amazing shinies. And again, as my main target was Torterra, in reality, after a thousand right resets, I would be happy with picking any of these guys up. As previously mentioned, of course, any other time an MMO appeared in the Mirelands, I would first talk to Mai and identify any special outbreaks that would pop up on the map. Whilst regular outbreaks have a chance to turn into special outbreaks, it would simply take too long to check all these. So I went gun who for the guaranteed outbreak first. Most of the time they would transform into the next evolution that I give them one. But if I got lucky, I would occasionally get an outbreak of alpha Pokemon. One way I possibly could have saved time on this was by using the Austin John MMO manipulation method. However, my brain is infinitely way too small for that. So instead, I'll just leave it in the description if you're more interested in that. Now, one thing you need to know about me is, although I lay out a solid and cohesive plan for myself, it's very unlikely that I'll actually stick to it. And with Shiny Oshawa being one of the final shiny starters that I didn't have, I couldn't resist the opportunity to go check out the odd massive mass outbreak in the Alabaster Icelands. And so, naturally in the first massive mass outbreak of the stream, I faced for the first time. I did well hello there! <laughs> that does in fact complete my family. Um, I wasn't expecting that today. With Shiny Duskull added to my roster, things were looking rather up. This completed my Shiny Duskull family, and with that, the first phase was on the board, only 12 minutes in the stream. I'm sure the Shiny Alpha will be the next Shiny this time around. Woo! What shines? Oh, it's Shiny Tangela! Oh, I think I need that. I mean, it's another phase, but that's okay. I think I need that. I, that was that loud in my ear. I actually thought that was one of you guys had redeemed uh, the sound alert for it. Yes, back in the Myrlands, I found a full old Shiny Tangela. At technically higher odds than Torterra, because I have Torterra's Pokedex perfected. But it's okay. This is another Shiny that I need for my living decks. And I was happy to see his cute little face appear. But at this point, we're not two hours into the hunt. And I needed to remind myself as to why I was here in the first place. I will get this Alpha Torterra at some point. And naturally, of course, it would be another two hours before I find my next Shiny. <gasps> okay, we got a Shiny. I don't think it's an Alpha. That's okay. That's okay. 
That's okay. We got a shiny Ghastly. It was another phase. It was a bad shiny Pokemon, but after not seeing anything for almost three hours, I was just happy to see a shiny. But eventually, after weaving through mass outbreak after mass outbreak, right reset after right reset, and bandit fight after bandit fight, our efforts were finally recognized to get my fur accurate. <gasps> oh my god, there it is! There it is! Dude, let's freaking go! Oh. I just got bonked by a freaking shit. <laughs> Despite getting beat up by the alphabet, I swiftly returned and added the truest of G's to my collection, completing my shiny alpha from MMOs. And so, on completion, with the soft reset method likely to take the most amount of time to complete, I decided to focus my efforts solely on finding my first right reset shiny. And so I did just that. Reset after reset, and nothing. No shiny Pokemon whatsoever for another four hours, putting us at the eight hour total for this challenge so far. But that was all right before this happened. <gasps> what shined, what shined, what shined, what shined? Ah, oh, dude, it's another toxic group. It couldn't have been that one. <laughs> it couldn't have been the one I needed. <laughs> Thank you game for my fifth shiny toxic croak. Ex oh, sorry. Wow, that homie really just ran away there. <laughs> so no shiny alpha, but at least it was another shiny phase, pinning us at four total. But, just as I thought the universe had it out for me to never find a shiny from this right reset, Toxicroak summoned his bigger brother. Shiny Sudowoodo- Oh! <gasps> yes! <laughs> Let's freaking go, dude! It's not the one I wanted. It's not the one I wanted. It's another phase, but that's okay. Torterra eludes us yet again. <laughs> shiny Alpha Toxicroak, dude. And, so, Torterra slipped through my grasp yet again. But. Finding two shiny alpha Pokemon in just under 9 hours is a pretty impressive feat. Not only to mention that I'd finally beaten the curse of the Crimson Mirelands, ultimately leaving us with only one more shiny alpha to hunt on. The final shiny hunting method for me left to utilize was the MMO soft reset method. This was originally publicized by SP Coop, so I'll leave a link to his original video in the description. But my original desired target from this method was the all elusive shiny card of war. I've hunted for this specific alpha Pokemon on a number of occasions, but I've always ended up phasing. So, unlike Torterra, I can specifically hunt down this desired alpha. So, towards the tail end of day one's stream, I cleared out the MMO in my way and began soft resetting to get the card of war to respawn. Ultimately finishing out day one with no more shinies, but a comfortable reset on the board. Unfortunately day two wasn't much better in terms of resets either, but on the upside, chat managed to get a shiny roll to appear using the fake shiny sound that I have connected to my stream. Been a little bit. Not too long. That was a good use of it. That was a good use of it. Oh, <gasps> there was an actual shiny dude! After finishing that stream on 350 resets complete, I was determined to see this hunt through. So, after stream, I decided to carry on a few more resets when this happened. <gasps> oh my god, what? Dude, I was just going in to fix my webcam sense. <laughs> Why some habit let me actually fix my webcam sense? <laughs> Dude, I was gonna go to 500 for this thing tonight, and then finish it off on stream tomorrow. But here it is. And, I mean, only one shiny rods to go. Nope, and she's apparently gonna kill me. Boink. Nice, <laughs> man. Let's go check that out. It's getting lit, and I need to record a YouTube shorts tonight as well. But... Here they all are, along with my, my two Alpha Empoleons as well. A very blue squad going on here today. And that concludes the challenge. In total, it took me around 15 hours to find all three shiny Alpha Mons. But despite all that, I wasn't totally satisfied. So in the coming days, I continued my hunt. And well, today I'd like to leave you with this clip where I not only found shiny Alpha Patch Risu, but another wonderful surprise in the exact same outbreak.